Senators, I, I love serving in the Senate. I love serving with each and every one of you. You know, uh, this is an or organic floor that has a lot of views. We all represent different districts. We all come from different areas with different concerns. What I love most about SJR 2 is it unites us in understanding there's a problem, a federal problem. And while some of the members want to put pressure on Congress to come to the table, other members, like me, want to put pressure on the president so that he'll come to the table and that everybody negotiates in good faith for the betterment of all of us. Some of our members believe in open borders. Other members, like me, believe in our sovereignty. Some members believe that, that people can take cuts in line, while other members believe that you have to go through the process we all represent our districts to the best of our ability, and we have to be respectful of each and every person and who they represent. What I like best about SJR, too, is that it unites us on one issue, that this is a problem and the federal government must address it. It doesn't say or mandate that it has to be amnesty. It doesn't mandate that it has to be closed borders. It simply asks the federal government to do its job. For those reasons, I can support it. The fact that it doesn't mandate anything or dictate anything to the federal government other than to say, let's put people first, let's solve this problem, is the reason why I stand in strong support of this bill. And I want to thank the author for being so thoughtful in understanding that we all come from different districts, we all represent different views, but that's what makes our country and our state great. Thank you. Thank you. Senator Stone. Thank, thank you, uh, Mr. President. I also want to uh, commend uh, Senator Vidak for bringing SRJ2 to the floor, and I'm, I'm very proud to serve on the floor with all members here today. I am a, uh, a child whose grandparents uh, came from other countries, from, from Russia and from Canada, and went through the, the legal process to become citizens and went through Ellis Island. And uh, I'm, very, I'm very proud to be the, the grandson of, of these immigrants that helped give me the life of achieving the American dream in the United States. And I, and I believe that the Resolution is very important because where California goes, the rest of the country goes. And I want to commend my colleagues for urging Congress and the President to work together to solve this, this problem that creates a lot of uncertainty and a lot of problems, especially at the local government level. I am a believer in a pathway to immigration status uh, for many of my constituents that work in the farming communities in the eastern Coachella Valley and the hospitality throughout Riverside County, they need certainty and a pathway to, to citizenship. I believe in a closed border. I believe our border is, is like a sieve, and my concern is not the illegal immigrants that may be venturing to the United States for a better life, but my concern is terrorists. They're gonna take advantage of this porous nature of our borders and cause our citizens um, harm. It was mentioned by our Senate pro tem some comments made by Republicans in Congress. And as we all know, there are millions of Democrats in this country, there are millions of Republicans in this country, and there are many comments that are made by both sides of the aisle that many of us will just look at and just shake our heads and be very concerned uh, about their insensitivity. Um, their arrogance uh, with respect um, to a lot of issues. But I'll remind many of you that we had a debacle in uh, Murrieta when we had many of these children and mothers coming across the border uh, in search of a better life to be united with, with families. And they were overwhelmed at the Texas border and they were flown into San Diego and they wanted to transfer many of these children and women that were ill from their long journey 
from Mexico into the United States, I was then a county official. And my number one goal as a county official was to provide these people that were being delivered to us with the health and human services that they desperately needed. And we worked with ICE and we worked with Border Patrol and I asked that we have our mobile hospitals put on Border Patrol property to ensure that these children that were coming into our country were appropriately immunized as we embarked on a strong immunization policy here yesterday and to make sure that those who were ill were receiving the medical attention that they, that they needed and to assimilate services for these people if they were going to be released into our communities to ensure that they would not be sleeping on the streets, that they had food to eat, that they had medical care. I regret to inform you that the Obama administration refused to allow our county hospital on wheels to provide this intervention for these people that were suffering. So we can sit here today and talk about flaws on the Republican side of the aisle. We can talk about flaws on the Democrat side of the aisle. But I think the bottom line is that we're all humanitarians on this floor. People want to come to this country for a better quality of life. They want to achieve the American dream. They want a better future for their children and their grandchildren. And I believe that we all stand united in that process. We need Congress and the President to work together to come up with a comprehensive plan that everyone can buy into. And if the federal government is going to uh, grant any type of amnesty programs, then so be it. However, we need to encourage the federal government to write the check so that we don't create an unfunded mandate on the state of California, we don't create an unfunded mandate on the citizens of counties and cities that are going to have to bear the costs. Many of these cities and many of these counties that you represent that are already on the edge, just climbing out of this economic debacle to provide services for those that are legally here already. So, Mr. President, uh, I again commend uh, Senator Vidak for SJR2. I think it's important that we stand united as the State Senate in encouraging the President to work with the Congress comprehensively and let's put the political rhetoric aside and let's pass some humanitarian legislation that gives people the path to citizenship and ensures that governments like the states, the counties, and the cities have the financial resources to take care of the humanitarian services that are going to be imposed upon it. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Stone. Senator Penn. Thank you, Mr. President, members. Um, I want to uh, speak also in support of SGR2, and I want to thank uh, Senator Vidak for bringing this forward. Uh, I know several people made reference to Ellis Island. Uh, my parents immigrated, but they didn't come through Ellis Island. They came the other way. Now, they were actually able to come to this country because um, there, was, there was actually an opportunity for them to come over, but actually just the generation before we had an act here in the United States that actually forbid immigration from uh, of, of people of Chinese origin to this country, the Exclusion Act. In fact, it wasn't really kind of lifted till after World War II. If my parents had been you know, of a different, slightly earlier generation, they would never have been able to make it over, no matter you know, what their desires were. And so we know there have been times where our country has had a dysfunctional uh, set of laws regarding immigrants and immigration. Uh, we know that our current immigration system is dysfunctional. We need to have a path to citizenship I appreciate the fact that we here in the Senate are having a resolution that calls on our federal government, our Congress, and our president to work to try to come to a solution so we can get past and correct the wrongs of our current system, which is not working. And so I want to, so hopefully we will not only pass this resolution, there's a package of bills that was announced that we will also show our action on those so that we will do what we can in our state to address this and set an example for the rest of the country and for our federal government and some that this is that they need to reform the system. We need to have a path to citizenship. We need to fix our broken immigration system, not later, but now. And I appreciate the fact that we're going to take leadership and I appreciate the fact that Senator Vidak is bringing this resolution forward. I appreciate the fact that my colleagues here 
uh, I appreciate the, uh, what uh, Senate Pro Tem De Leon said, that we need to also then show through our example, but also through our, act, uh, through our words, how important it is that our colleagues who are in the federal government, those both in California and beyond, but particularly our colleagues in California, that they need to make this a higher priority. And thank you again for this resolution. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Penn. Senator Wynn. Thank you, Mr. President. You, um, it's, actually, it's an honor to serve on this floor uh, because, you know, I get to hear the debates, especially when it comes to immigration. Um, I'm not sure about everybody's history and background here, but I actually was a victim. My family were victims. The President of the United States allowed over 30 years ago refugees from Vietnam to come to the United States. But California, California politicians actually didn't want us. And so it's actually e interesting for me to see the debate that, you know, you know that, that over 30 years ago, we in California tried to stop refugees from coming to California. 30 years later, standing here in front of you, we uniting together as Californians to say there's a broken system in the federal government, immigration needs to be respected, and that we are all immigrants, whether immediately or our ancestors are. And so it's actually very emotional for me to see this because having been the direct victim of a state that didn't want us. And so I just want to thank my colleagues, um, Senator Vidak, for the resolution because it is the right thing to do. Send a message. We are the largest state in the United States, the eighth largest economy. We have the power to send a strong message, and that message is we will be united. Because every child, every family, we're all humans, and we should be treated with dignity, and we should be treated fairly. Give us the chance. Let another Janet win, go through the system, be a naturalized citizen, and become a state senator in the largest state in the United States. And so I just want to thank you for your comments and thank you for Senator Vidak for bringing this forward. And I stand with you to support the resolution today. Thank you. Senator Huff. Thank you, Mr. President. You know, I've spoken this once before. I stand in support of this. But as we've had our robust discussion, we found that some of the, we find how sensitive the issue is because some of us feel like scabs are being picked at. That one of the previous speakers tried to cast this in a partisan tone about Republican governors, the Republican majority leader. Let me be clear, there's no clean hands in this. This is not a Democrat issue, this is not a Republican issue. We all need to come together to solve it. Now, I, when I first came to Sacramento, Kevin McCarthy was the minority leader in the assembly, and I was privileged to serve with him. Having said that, I, t I can tell you he's keenly aware of the situation, that as leaders, it's difficult to get everybody to build the consensus necessary to tackle the truly tough issues. And this is truly a tough issue. If leadership was easy, certainly President Barack Obama, who campaigned on this issue, that he would solve the immigration problem, when he controlled both houses of Congress, he would have solved that. But he didn't. And I want to be real clear. I think if executive action is absolutely the wrong way to solve this, because it is not the right way. The right way is to have Congress act is to have something lasting. Presidential action only exists while that president's in office. So we all need to come together. We need to understand there's no clean hands in this, but it's a thorny issue that we states have to deal with. And as others have pointed out, the last time we had comprehensive immigration reform, it was a Republican governor, a Republican president, Ronald Reagan, who did that. So let's not make it partisan, but let's roll up our sleeves as we're doing here today. This is the right thing, to call upon Congress, the appropriate body, to get this comprehensive immigration reform, and the time is now. Members, as we continue to debate this discussion, please, just to remind you about decorum of the House. Uh, we're, we're doing well so far. I just want to make sure we, everybody knows we respect each other in this chamber. Senator Hall. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. President. 
and to the members of this great esteemed body we call the Senate, I too stand in support of uh, SJR 2, to call on Congress to um, consider compre comprehensive immigration reform. But let me just say that the Democrats in California have always stood for comprehensive immigration reform. It is not just voting on a resolution that matters. What matters most is voting on legislation in California that would have an impact on how these 11 million undocumented uh, in, in America will be able to function out of the shadows to be able to contribute to the economic fabric of not just this nation, but also California, the seventh largest economy of the world. Now, I stood with the Latino caucus and many other members of various caucuses in this legislature just two days ago as we unveiled a comprehensive immigration package. And I must say that as united as we are discussing this resolution, we were not united standing at that press conference asking for the members of both houses to vote on this comprehensive immigration package that's coming through both of these houses. I did not see the unanimity when we voted for the driver's license bill. I did not see the unanimity when we were voting for other legislation like the DREAM Act and, and, and many others. So I hope that as we are having a kumbaya, that on a resolution, that that support of a resolution will also transfer, ladies and gentlemen, to your yes vote when we bring forward these immigration bills on both the House and on the assembly floor. And I challenge my colleagues to the left and to the right, as we are so articulately displaying courage today, that that same courage is exacted when these bills hit the red carpet and the green carpet. So today, I stand united in supporting SJR 2, a resolution, but I pray that you too will stand united with me when we vote yes for this comprehensive immigration package that is coming through this House in just a few weeks. And on that, members, senators, I also stand in support of SJR 2. Thank you, Senator Hall. Any additional debate or discussion? Senator Nielsen. Mr. President, briefly a second time. A key issue here related to any legislation moving forward is how the undocumented are dealt with. We cannot legitimize undocumented remaining here and becoming dependents or even becoming productive citizens if they're going to stay in that status. If they're going to remain in America, they need to get on the citizenship track and become citizens or then they can go back to their native country. He is how we deal with the undocumented. And we have a huge problem in the United States right now, and it is growing as a problem with the undocumented. We must pay attention to this issue. Thank you. Any additional debate or discussion on this item? Senator Fuller. First, I'd like to thank this House for having honest debate with one another and for respectfulness to one another, even though there are some wounds for all of us that this touches. And I would just like to say that I respect the respectful debate, and I believe that in the last year or two, we have become, as a group, more respectful for one another by, by joint effort, by joint effort of will because we all are stressed to our tolerance levels sometimes along the way, and it's very hard to be the, the best person that we know we can be. But having said that, I want to just say this, that consensus solutions come from focusing on the issue. I've had years of win-win trading and negotiations, 
And the first rule of that is always be respectful to one another, stay focused on the issues, and do not focus on the people. Because to find the synthesis that brings new and glorious solutions takes finding the old and gluing it to the new and dragging them both together in an in a integrated, comprehensive solution that has everybody's fingerprints on it. If you look at a piece of legislation and it has only one kind of fingerprints on it, it is not going to be a consensus solution. This problem has been through Republican and Democrat Congresses and presidents for a number of years. It hasn't been solved because it's difficult. But I do believe, as our pro tem, that we can be a new era together and we can find a synthesis. I do not believe that we can find a historical solution. That's been going on for a long time. I do believe we can find a synthesis. But I beg you, I beg you to remember that division comes from focusing on people and history of hurts and differences and injustices. And if we want to perpetuate that, then just stay in the history, stay focused on the people, stay focused on the division. If you want for all of us to move forward, a, a bet some of us slower than others, then let's stay focused on the future. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Fuller. Any additional debate or discussion on this item? Seeing and hearing none, Secretary, please call the roll. Oh, I'm sorry. Senator Vilak, would you like to close? Yes. Members, I respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Senator Vilak. Secretary, please call the roll. Allen. Aye. I, Anderson. Aye. I, Bates. Aye. I, Bell. Aye. I, Berryhill. I Block, I Canella, I De Leon, I Fuller, I Gaines, I Galgioni, I Hall, I Hancock, I Hernandez, I Hertzberg, I Hill, I Hueso, I Huff, I Jackson, I Lada, I Leno, I Leva, I Lou, I McGuire, I Mendoza, I Mitchell, Aye. I Monning, I Morlock, Morell, I Wynn, I Nielsen, I Pan, I Pavley, I Roth, I Runner, I Stone, I Vidak, I Wachowski, I Wolk. Wolk, I. Call the absent members. Morlock, I. Ayes 39, no zero. The assembly amendments are concurred in. Members, we're moving to Senate third reading. File, beginning with file item 14. Senator Jackson, are you prepared to take up this item? I am. Secretary, please read. Senate Resolution 17 by Senator Jackson relative to California Health Care Decisions Day. Senator Jackson. Thank you very much, Mr. President and colleagues. I hope this doesn't take up quite as much time. Uh, it's uh, about a topic that will impact each and every one of us. It's called uh, End of Life. And uh, this resolution recognizes that next Thursday, April 16th, is Healthcare Decision Day in California. This measure honors patient preferences as a critical element in providing quality end of life care. Now, colleagues, for some reason, this is a topic that is often very sensitive to people and they try to avoid the conversation about end of life. But we used to say that there were two things that were inevitable to each of us. One was death and the other taxes. Well, some people have figured out how to avoid taxes, but to date, no one has been able to figure out how to avoid death. And so as one of life's or as the only part of life that we know is inevitable, it is clearly important that we address this issue and that we do it in a meaningful and respectful way so that every adult has the right to decide his or her own health care treatment and after discussion with loved ones about preferences should appoint a person as health care agent or surrogate so that he or, she, or that he or she trusts 
to make health care decisions for him or her in the event of incapacity by executing advanced health care planning documents. This seems like a relatively common sense type of approach, but we know that talking about death and dying is incredibly difficult for so many people, and yet so important. Now, polls show that most Americans would like to talk about their advanced care needs, but they do not know how to or with whom to have these conversations. A recent study published by the American Journal of Preventative Medicine reported that approximately 26% of the individuals that they studied had an advanced directive, 26%, and that most frequently reported reason for not having one was lack of awareness, that if they were aware, they would want to do this. According to the Center for, the D for Disease Control, advanced health care planning can help alleviate unnecessary suffering, improve quality of life, and provide better understanding of the decision-making challenges facing the individual and his or her caregivers. It is essential that all adults, regardless of age, discuss their health care wishes with their health care providers and provide them with a copy of their advanced health care planning documents so that their health care decisions can be honored and can reflect their wishes should they become incapacitated. It's also important that seriously ill people or their designated health care agent or surrogate work with their physicians and consider completing a physician order for life-sustaining treatment. We call it a POLST form. If the person wants to avoid or receive any or all life-sustaining treatments, reside in a long-term care facility, or require long-term care services and might die within the next year. A pulse form requires that as a potential condition. The National Health Care Decision Day initiative is a collaborative effort of national, state, and community organizations created to inspire, educate, and empower each of us and our providers, our health care providers, about the importance of advanced care planning. The NHDD has designated April 16th as National Health Care Decision Day, and hundreds of events will take place all over the country to commemorate this day and to inform the public of each of our rights to create this advanced health care directive that reflects our wishes if and when the need arises. So next Thursday, April 16th, will be National California, rather, Health Care Decision Day, again, to encourage all citizens to communicate their health care preferences and execute advanced health care planning documents, and for seriously ill people to learn about the POLST form that will give them the power, the right, the opportunity to have their wishes and needs identified and respected. Members, I urge each of you to participate in this day and help organize community events to encourage all of our citizens to communicate their health care preferences to their families and their health care providers. I think each and every one of us has had an experience in this building, on this issue, with our loved ones, with ourselves, having had diagnoses that force us to confront our humanity to force us our, to confront the things that happen at the end of life. And I like to kiddingly say, although not kiddingly say, that life does not end well. But we can, through our own power, make it end as best as possible and make our serious illnesses be dealt with in the ways that we wish them to be dealt with. And with that, I would ask for your I vote. Members, debate or discussion on this item? Debate or discussion? Seeing and hearing none, Secretary, please call the roll. Allen? Aye. Aye. Anderson? Yes. No. Bates? Bell? Aye. Berryhill? 
Block. I. Canella. I. De Leon. Fuller. Gaines. No. Galgioni. I. Hall. I. Hancock. I. Hernandez. I. Hertzberg. I. Hill. I. Hueso. Huff. No. Jackson. I. Lada. I. I. Leno. I. Leva. I. Lou. I. McGuire. I. Mendoza. I. Mitchell. I. Monning. I. Morlock. No. Morell. No. Wynn. Nilsson. Pan. I. Pavley. I. Roth. I. Runner. No. Stone. Vidak. I. Wachowski. I. Wolk. Wolk I. Call, call the absent members. Bates. No. Barry Hill. De Leon. I. Fuller. Hueso. I. Wynn. Nilsson. Stone. Ayes 27, no 7, the resolution is adopted. Moving to file item 15, pass on file. File item 16, Senator Fuller, not at her desk. File item 17, Senator Wolk. Secretary, please read. Senate Bill 35 by Senator Wolk, an act relating to taxation to take effect immediately, tax levy. Senator Wolk. Thank you, Mr. President. Senators, 35 enacts disaster loss treatment for individual and corporate taxpayers in Napa. Sol uh, Solano and Sonoma counties that suffered the damage from the earthquake last August. This is identical tax re uh, treatment for taxpayers affected by the earthquake that the legislature has enacted for nearly every other significant California disaster over the last 25 years. It extends the deadline to amend the previous year's tax returns to apply the losses, which will result in a tax refund that then can be used to rebuild and recover. I ask for your I vote. Members, a better discussion on this item. Senator Stone. Thank you, Mr. President. I want to uh, commend the Senator um, for um, bringing forward uh, SB 335. Uh, After uh, being sworn in, I, I took one of my first trips to Napa and, uh, and saw the, the devastation in the downtown area and the, and the small businesses that were, were suffering. And so I want to commend you for, for bringing this forward. And I believe that we should be giving the relief to those small businesses to get them back on their feet again. Thank, thank you very much for doing this. Thank you. Members, any additional debate or discussion on this item? Seeing and hearing none, Senator Wolk, would you like to close? I ask for your I vote. Thank you. Secretary, please call the roll. Allen. I. Anderson. Bates. I. Bell. I. Berryhill. Block. I. Canella. I. De Leon. Fuller. Gaines. I. Galgioni. I. Hall. I. Hancock. I. Hernandez. I. Hertzberg. I. Hill. I. Hueso. I. Huff. I. Jackson. I. Lada. I. Leno. I. Leva. I. Lou. I. McGuire. I. Mendoza. I. Mitchell. I. Monning. I. Morlock. I. Morell. I. Wynn. Nilsson. Pan. I. Pavley. I. Roth. I. Runner. I. Stone. I. Vidak. I. Wykowski. I. Wolk. Wolk I. Anderson I. Call the absent members. Barry Hill. De Leon. I. Fuller. Win, I. Nilsson. Nilsson, I. Fuller, I. Ayes 38, no zero. The measure passes. Moving to file item 18, members. Senator Jackson, not at her desk. Pass on file. 